Stride is a VR parkour game. Is it good? Should you play it? I expected Stride to be a gimmicky letdown, since it's obviously inspired by Mirror's Edge, and VR titles have, in the past, had the tendency to be shallow. At face value, this was a recipe for a disappointed Peter. Stride is not the gimmicky letdown that I expected, and I am so happy about it. It might actually become my favorite VR game ever, depending on the additions that they make in the future. Mirror's Edge was already parkour in VR to the 2016 model of me. This is the official next leap, or should I say, Stride. Unlike actual parkour, Stride is smooth and flowy. Parkour is bumpy, gritty, and jarring. Stride feels like what you want parkour to feel like. In other words, Stride allows you to experience what you really want when you do parkour. There's not much in gaming that will make you feel cooler than when you pull off a wall run and shoot an enemy at the same time. And sliding in this game is one of the sickest movements I've done in any VR game. You might think that moving your arms to run is silly, but it really helps with the immersion, and it's also good for the easily motion sick. Even with the arm movements, you'll feel extremely light and almost weightless in your movements. Bounding from wall to wall is almost effortless, and you won't even skip a beat when landing a 20 foot tall drop. This accessibility and simpleness makes the game extremely addicting. I was dreaming of the game after the first night of playing. The environments are clean and sharp, very akin to Mirror's Edge. And again, more about this later. I'm not sure if this is a good thing all of the time, but it really works well for the endless mode because it looks fantastic, it's easy to run, and it minimizes detail and distractions. Though there is only endless mode at the moment, there are more modes on the way, including a story, as it is still in early access. Endless mode is actually endless, but each round you play will be different from the last, as the architecture combinations are randomly generated for each round. Your first hour in stride will be frustrating. The next two hours will be a phase of complex and deliberate learning. And every hour after is, for the most part, smooth and buttery fun with an intense desire to improve. Much like real life parkour, there is an extensive learning and practice process. But because the physical part is diminished by about 97%, you'll learn and perfect at a much faster rate. You'll find yourself doing things out of muscle memory, much like regular parkour, in ways that you didn't think that you'd ever be able to do, looking back at your first 10 minutes in the game. This is a pretty physical game, so you're going to get hot within about 5 minutes, and full on sweaty within 10 minutes. So it will be very helpful to have alternative headset equipment such as a leather gasket or a fan frunk mod. The best recommendation I have for improving, which helps with staying cooler for longer, is to work on making your movements more efficient. One way is to figure out which size jumps you can just press the jump button for versus swinging your arms for, or grabbing a ledge with one hand versus both. Now for my raw opinion on the game, and I'll start with the good. It's no doubt going to disappoint a few for being $20 and only having one mode, but after seeing this mode, I'm optimistic that the content being delivered later will be well worth the price. Actually, I'd almost say that what we have now is worth the price alone. Endless mode is masterfully done, as I can play 10 rounds in a row and still be interested and thrown for a loop if I'm not on my A game. Although most obstacle sections are the same, each section will more than likely have multiple routes to take, so I haven't gotten tired of them yet. This is a really good thing, as it would be super boring to have only one possible route per section. On that note, not only are there alternative routes, but there are different methods of approach for each obstacle. There are many obstacles that I've had the option to jump over, jump off of, or vault with my hands, all of which produce different results. The challenge is potentially the most enjoyable aspect of the game. Our brains are wired to problem solve, and that leads us to become addicted to games like this. Aside from the challenge though, the visuals are more than pleasant to look at. No, it's not as pretty as a modern day flat screen game, but its simple and sleek design gives me a feeling similar to walking through a fancy and modernist park. There's not much time to stand around and appreciate the view in endless mode, so the textures that could be there aren't really missed. When it works, shooting feels pretty good. The impact of bullets on your enemies is satisfying. The sounds of reloading and shooting are snappy. The aesthetics of shooting could be better overall, but like I said, you're not going to pay it too much mind when you're running for your life. Gripping ledges and pulling your body over obstacles is very responsive. 
This might be the most realistic feeling movement of all of them, and I'd imagine that the reason is because you can see your hands, whereas you can't see your legs. There's also the fact that no human can continue running off of a 40-foot fall like you can in this game. The imaginative abilities, such as the one just mentioned, play to the game's strengths, and as I mentioned before, this is a game that feels like what you want real parkour to feel like. Effortless. Wall running is awesome, mostly because this isn't something that you can do in real parkour. Well, at least not to the extent that it would be much more effective than just jumping the gap. I already mentioned sliding, but I'll add that sliding looks only half as cool on Spectator as it does in the HMD. The grappling hook and zip lines are really the only movements that don't do much for me. I know that they will probably be favorites of many, just because you can be Spider-Man, but to me, they're just rest breaks from running. And striding, which is the act of jumping consecutively, is the most important movement in the game, and they've done a great job with it. It feels so precise when you hit a triple stride. All of the movements are done extremely well, and for a parkour game, that's what matters most. So yeah, the game is pretty great. But of course the game isn't perfect, and since it's still in early access, it's going to have problems that may not be in the release build. The most problematic element from my experience is the gun. Pulling out the gun is extremely inconsistent for seemingly no reason. I'm assuming that this is a technical issue more than user error, as it really shouldn't be this faulty. Also, reloading isn't consistent either. Sometimes I definitely pull my hand down to reload and it doesn't work. Other times the gun disappears and I have to go through the series of pullout failures again. This is probably the most frustrating issue with the game at the moment. The next most annoying problem is the low, narrow wall. If you don't jump at the right distance from the low wall, you'll jump clear over it into the pits of death, even if you attempt to jump directly after. I was going to mention a problem of getting stuck under ceilings when sliding or stuck in the floor, but it seems like in the time that it took to make this video, they've already fixed those errors. So if that's the case, then the development process already seems promising. I know that some others would have more bad things to say than I do, but I'd recommend those people play more than 30 minutes. At first it seemed like the game was screwing up, but after spending some time learning the system, I realized that each frustration was a cause of my own. For instance, this three-tiered stride sequence. At first, I had about a 50% success rate, and then 75%, but I still thought it was part of the map that was broken. And then I learned that the problem wasn't the map, it was my timing of the consecutive jumps. It completely turned my attitude towards the spot around, which also reminds me of my parkour days, spending hours practicing one movement in one spot. Sometimes we like to blame the games for our failures, when much of the time we're too arrogant to recognize that we are just not proficient. My suggestions to the developers range from reasonable to pfft, yeah right. My most reasonable suggestion is to add a camera shake reduction in the spectator. I suspect that many others would like to share clips of their awesome moves, but the shakiness is pretty jarring at the moment. I'm not a fan of the way the moving barrier damages you. Sometimes it will get so far ahead of you that you're better off just falling off of the map and losing one health point versus trying to catch back up and losing two health points. It would be great to add more depth to the movements, which could in turn introduce more depth to the environments, such as vertical wall running and propulsion from open hand vaults. Vertical wall running would be one more scaling option instead of adding a low wall to jump off of or the ladders beneath ledges. Open hand vaults such as a Kong or Cat Pass would raise the immersion quite a bit, as currently, if you push off of an obstacle with open hands, you may not even get over it. You can vault an obstacle by grabbing the ledge, but this sometimes slows your momentum and breaks the immersion. Open hand vaulting is designed to continue momentum or push it faster. Open hand vaulting probably requires physics similar to Boneworks, which could get complicated, but if not, then it would be a great addition. One very reasonable suggestion is about the aesthetics. The trailer displays more detailed aesthetics and really emphasizes sounds and textures. When a hand slaps a surface, there's a louder pat sound and the footsteps are louder too, but the sounds aren't very prevalent in the endless mode. I personally love these types of sounds, but if it's a matter of personal taste, a volume slider would be nice for those that don't like the sounds. The variable sounds of a foot hitting a rail or a hand slapping concrete are very satisfying to me, so I know that it would enhance the experience so much more. Currently, it feels a little sterile because of the lack of audible aesthetics, but that's not a bad thing for the endless mode, as it decreases distractions when you're trying to go for the high score. Okay, so here is my first semi-crazy suggestion. 
A more realistic mode would be amazing, with smaller jumps, more lifelike environments, physical limitations, etc. This could engage non-VR parkour enthusiasts, especially with a modding community where modders can recreate real-world environments. Those of you familiar with my Alex mod reviews would recognize Porto, Portugal, where I talk about how cool it would be to do parkour in that environment, and that's exactly my suggestion here. Alright, so, my really crazy suggestion. I don't know, maybe it isn't so crazy. There are apparent benefits to bringing a multiplayer element. Not only would it be a huge opportunity for the developers to sell cosmetics and further the game's development and depth, but it would offer a long lifespan for the game and many hours of fun with friends and random people. The obvious multiplayer game modes are co-op, racing, and tag, but what about, and this is admittedly a really wild idea, imagine a battle royale with this game. Here's what it could look like. With a pool of 10 to 20 players based on the size of the possible map, Everyone spawns evenly spread out either on the edge or near the middle. The circle moves inward as usual, but small temporary circles expand where players stand on one platform for an extended period of time. This keeps everyone moving and doing parkour, and not camping. All the usual pieces like finding weapons, armor, and health, but much more simple execution like only one magazine per weapon pickup. Meaning that players can't sit ahead of someone and hold them for eternity like they do in other battle royales. They shoot their shots, and if they don't kill, they have to move and find another weapon. Because of the complex and interesting mechanics of this game, it could be the next big battle royale. And a battle royale could not only bring players to this game, but to virtual reality in general. It would be a huge spectacle for streaming, at least for a short while, and it would be a ton of fun. Even if they don't implement any of this, it's still going to be a really fun game, and I recommend it to anyone playing VR. If you enjoyed this video, help it out by dropping a like so others can discover the game too. Let me know your thoughts and concerns about the game in the comments below, and until the next video, we'll be seeing you.